contained almost one quarter of the human race. But the days of the emperors are no more. One of the basic principles of our democracy is that every citizen has the right to know what is going on. During a six-week trip, I traveled over 7,000 miles in this land which is larger than either the United States or Canada. All powerful emperors, China's Great Wall fell into ruin. The rains washed out its foundations and the poor peasants. North from Peking to Manchuria, China's oldest center of heavy industry. Children in kindergartens were now being given guns, oh, yeah, these American yeah. students. Oh, wow. I don't know this man's name. Now, that to me was a very pragmatic, realistic position. And that indicated to me that China's relationship with the rest of the world was not based upon being part of a world communist movement, but was essentially based upon what would be best for China. The motto of the, uh, of the uh, Phi Beta Kappa Society in the United States is ad astra per aspera, Latin, to the stars we aspire. One must always have a goal that one is working for to make things better, but on a day-to-day -day basis, you have to deal with day-to-day -day realities. And so Cho Enlai impressed me as a person who was very focused on day-to-day -day realities rather than some abstract concept that we hope to achieve sometime in the distant future. Much of the work being done by hand here would be done by machine in an American shipyard. Despite having to use some backward techniques, they appear to be turning out quite seaworthy vessels. At the exit gate, an old riveter proudly shows how his pipe works, which seems to be a standing joke among his friends. The Dairen Locomotive Works is a typical example of the help China is receiving from the more technically advanced communist countries. A movement called the Great Leap Forward has been started. So how does China affect today's world, in your opinion? What happens in China happens, affects the whole world. The, when people burn coal in China, the smoke comes to the United States. And I think that the future of China and the future of the world, because what happens in China affects the entire world. And the relationship between the United States and China, I think, is the essential relationship in the world. Is how things affect one another. How does this grain of sand affect me as human? Do you go to the church? No, I'm Saturday? not religious. I, I am totally religious, which means I don't hold to any given religion. Oh, as far I... as I'm concerned, I believe in, in the human race. I believe in mankind. Me I don't too. understand the nature of reality and how to make it more positive. Mm. Now, I know that the term the greatest leap forward is a pejorative, is a negative term in China because of the negative things that happened during that period. Yet at the same time, my observation of the last 55 years is that this has been the greatest leap forward in the history of the world. What the people of China have managed to achieve since my first visit, since 1957, has been the greatest change for the largest number of people in the shortest period of time in the history of the human race. I want, I want to show how that change has taken place. Someone today, your age or even younger, knows nothing about this past. To be able to show the film that I took in 1957 and the films I took in 78, and to go to the same places today and to show this change is what I would like to do in order to, because I, this is the future of the planet. This is what's happening. It's the present and the future. So I, would, I call my project The Greatest Leap Forward, not The Great Leap Forward, but The Greatest Leap Forward, a positive thing. I would like to end the tour in Beijing at the National Day celebration because I filmed the National Day celebration in 1957, and it would be interesting to film the difference in what happens in Beijing on that day. This, what's the sound? The this, ocean, the east. 
It's time for a revolution. Ah, <laughs> uh, wait a moment, please. Hi. Uh, 